basically i'm a character artist and a concept artist in video game industry for last uh, almost 16 years right now and have been uh, very much lucky to be part of a uh, development team of different games so like prince of persia far cry 1 hd uh, how to train a dragon uh, school of dragons and uh, the last project i worked the crew uh that those are the games that i'm proud of uh, be a part of that uh so basically i'm i'm a completely self taught artist i have been learning since when i joined uh, the gaming industry and till now i'm learning on a daily basis uh, learning new tricks and tips uh, trying to understand different artists from uh, some other sources there are a lot of uh, resources available online right now you can learn whatever you want you can go to youtube you can just search it for and you can come up with some good solutions and you can tweak it as much as per your requirement and put it in your pipeline so the same thing what i did uh, for my this presentation so today what i'm going to talk about is real time real time here for uh, games right so this is the end uh, product of my current piece and i'm going to talk how uh, i was able to pull up this result uh, let me talk about the graphics the evolution of in game graphics in the industry so on the left hand side you can see uh, the earlier version of lara craft on the other side the latest version of that and the graphics quality is immensely different it has been up upgraded uh, from 0 to almost 80% right uh, there is no there is always a room for improvement so when the graphics is better uh, then the shader the material the requirement of maps uh, that also increases because we have to deal with different kind of maps uh, which we have to uh, plug in into our material or shader in the engine uh, to get a good better output so whenever there is a subject comes in front of me like creating ha uh, hair this is my expression okay and uh, maybe uh, that is the reference that you are being provided by the client okay you have to create this here and i'm like really okay so it's a kind of like a challenge because uh, it's very complicated process uh, because i'm learning Uh, and trying to use different kind of pipeline in my projects in my personal projects in my professional projects so after using different kind of pipelines i found uh, the pipeline what i'm going to show you right now is works better and i thought i should share with the community uh, so my whole presentation is based on two main subject one the hair card uh, placement the second one is that how to create textures and all of them are in a non destructive way is a procedural way okay so the first thing what i did is this is the model uh i sculpted this head a few months back and i thought that i should be using this model for this presentation so i took it and i rendered this model from different angles and bring it back to photoshop from uh, gbrush and started doing some paint overs on top of that so this are all like conceptualizing your character giving the characteristics of the character right so maybe uh, you generally in the production what happens that concept art concept artist and the game designer they work together and they they build up the story of the character they they, they do the designing of the character and the concept artist comes with the concept art to the modeling team and then okay like uh, this is the character this is the back story of the character and you have to build the character on top of that based on this so because this was my personal thing so i was little bit i got the freedom and i did a little bit uh, paint over so i made uh, i think 15 to 20 uh, concept art which is really really uh, speed concept art so for each one of them i spent like 5 to 7 minutes not more than that and that was the goal that i given myself okay 7 minutes done go to the next 7 minutes done maximum 10 so this is a 3 and mode 3 right 
So I got six uh, different heads with a different kind of uh, uh, hairstyles. And this is the time that I have to choose that which uh, head I should go ahead. So I chose uh, the fifth number, the five, the, uh, the middle one. And uh, once I chose that, okay, this is the one I have to go, uh, go with. So what I did in the next day, I rendered, I br brought that rendered images again and tried to sketch it out from the different angles to understand that what are the clumps, what are the structure of the hairs, uh, what are the clumps structure, how the flow should work, what is the hair flow, everything, because that is the most important thing for an artist to understand before uh, doing the uh, modeling, right? And uh, there is no, uh, I mean like, each and every people has their different kind of hairstyles and their structures are different. So it's good to do some sketches and try to understand. So before proceeding, I should uh, mention this one, which is sketching on a daily basis. Uh, I have a, uh, I'm lucky that I have a, a traditional sketching background and still I'm learning on a daily basis. Uh, I try to find out some time, at least 15 to 20 minutes on a daily basis to do some sketches, quick sketches in, in office or uh, in the station if I'm there uh, or at home. So here, uh, the eyebrows, the structure of the eyebrows. Uh, before placing the hair cards or before texturing it or before modeling something, if I try to sketch that and try to understand where is that tension line is or where the clumps are there or how uh, and where uh, the, uh, the hair card, the hair strand, you know, originates and where it ends, it's easier for me to uh, make the model. So here the same thing happened. Unfortunately, I couldn't cover uh, this part in modeling stage. Okay, so next stage is blocking out the shapes. So modeling is all about shapes. It's not about secondary shape or treasury shapes. It's all about big shapes, the primary shapes. Uh, the silhouette is very, very important in modeling, right? So when our uh, character is in the game, if it is uh, uh, far away from the camera, right? Still I have to recognize this is my character. This is the character what I want to play, right? Or if it is close to the camera, also it should have that the same quality of statistics or characteristics. So uh, silhouette and forms are very, very important for anything, it's not only about uh, characters, but also about any other modeling thing. Maybe it's an uh, environment, uh, art assets or something, right? So what I did is like, I, I tried to keep my reference on the other monitor, uh, on the other screen, and uh, I tried to do a very quick, uh, you know, the shapes with spheres. If you see uh, this position, you can see that there is a lot of uh, shapes are going on, big shapes are going on. I'm not, worried about the smaller shapes. I'm just uh, focusing on the bigger shapes at this stage, okay? So once I'm happy with that, pushing, pulling, uh, scaling, then I move to the another stage. Now this is a huge jump, right? So if you, if you go to this screen, this is a huge bulky shapes. But if I go to this screen, it has all the hair cuts. So it's a huge jump. So uh, maybe I will be uh, trying to show you uh, a little demo about that. Uh, so what I'll do is that I'll try to show you how I did it. So uh, before that, I want to, would like to know that how many of you are students? Can you please put your hands up? Okay, so I'm assuming that rest of you are all professionals working in the industry. So uh, how many of you do know about uh, work uh, with ZBrush on a daily basis? Right, cool. So uh, have, you, uh, have you heard about the uh, insert mesh brush, IMM brush? Yes, okay, thank you. Uh, let me show you, okay, cool. So uh, let me show you how I did it. And throughout the whole uh, presentation, I'll be keeping this file and I try to uh, uh, do a live demo. 
with the progression. Okay, I think it will be easier to understand how I did it. So let's say this is the head. I'm not taking the actual head because it's quite million polygon, so it, will, it may crash it. So I'll just keep this sphere as a head, and let's assume this is the head I'm working with, and uh, let's make it a little bit. Uh, uh, okay. Fine. So what I'll do is that uh, I will append one plane 3D over here and we can so solo the rest. Uh, we can go to the initialize button over here and then maybe create. Okay, this is a low poly one. You can see there is only, okay, uh, four polygons, I guess, yeah. Now I want to convert this into IMM brush, which is Later, I'm going to make it a hair card. So I'll just switch it off the pers uh, the perspective. And here, I can go to brush and create insert mesh. Insert uh, mesh. Okay, new one. It's done. Now, if I draw on top of that, it's just dragging. It's not creating the shape, right? So I'm going to stroke and curves switch on the curve, make this, I can see this. But the problem is that there is a gap, it's not welded enough, right? So what I have to do is that I have to go to brush and then uh, modifier, okay? So here there's the option called weld points and stretch. So it will fill up, fill up, fill it up, the areas and increase the uh, curve res resolution. If I click it on that, it will update with that. So I can see that it's completely welding and it's uh, completely stripe, right? It's, it's a completely long stripe. Now this thing, uh, this one, I'll be using, you can save this uh, brush if you want. You can save it from here, uh, save as the brush. So let's say this is my uh, head right now. And I want to create some of the uh, shapes. Okay, let's switch off the symmetry. So it's not snapping on that. So let's go over here, it's snapped, fine. Okay, now it's intersecting with your mesh. It happens every time, this is the problem. So what? how can we solve it? We can go to brush and there it's called depth, right? So in that depth, I can just push it a little bit up, okay, and click on that and it updates. So it's no more sticking inside that surface, but it's drawing on top of that, right? So let me uh, create a couple of them and then I'll move to the next step. So one, two, three, and if you're happy, clap your hands. <laughs> I'm just joking. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, I can see that I have already created three, only three strands, that's it. I'm not going to make it uh, uh, that clumsy. So uh, let's jump to this slide, okay? So this is the way how I created all the uh, hair cards, right? Now, what was my next step over here? My next step was to transfer all those uh, hair cards from ZBrush to Maya. In this case, I used Maya. You can use uh, 3ds Max or any other softwares. So there is a, a very good tool which is called Gozi or uh, Gozi. Uh, have you heard about Gozi? Yeah. Okay. Cool. So what does Gozi? What does is that it uh, creates a bridge between uh, your ZBrush and primary 3D software. So in this case, I'm clicking Gozi and uh, I'm just waiting to be updated this file into Maya. So it will take a little bit time before that I'll just uh, let you know what exactly and how, uh, what are the second process that I did. Is that you can see that uh, generally uh, the hair cards in the next gen games, we have a poly count budget, a tri count budget for every character, for everything, because it's very optimized world. So uh, for here, it's okay if you go for like 15 to 20,000 tri count, it's good, it's okay, fine. But here I can see that it's only 9k tries, which is really good, right? Uh, so, but let me uh, load it. 
Oops. Is it? Oh, that's going that side. Okay, fine. So, in Maya, I can see, uh, I can switch on the uh, wireframe mode. I can see all of them has already come, right? Now, the thing is that the head and the, uh, the uh, haircut, they are merged together. Now, I don't need in that way. So, I have to really split it in two different subtools. So, I can go directly to the GBrush and what I can ask GBrush is that now, split it as per the group. So these are two groups. I clicked on that. Okay, fine. And it's split it into three different parts, right? Okay. So there are three different parts right now. Uh, generally, it doesn't go for three because it will uh, it will be, uh, I should have split it in another way also. Let me show you how to do that. So this is this this may be the sometimes we face it this kind of situation where we see okay and uh, this is the state where we came right now what we can do is that if you have like a uh, hundred poly strips if I do the group split it will create hundred different uh, sub tools it's very difficult to maintain that. What we can do is that we can hide our main uh, head object and then we can go to the split and split hidden. That's it. So this is my hair and this is my head. Now what we can do is that I can export all them through Gozi by clicking on visible. Now you can see this is separate object and these are all separate objects, right? Now, but the problem is this object, the, the, this, uh, this uh, subtool is ha only one uh, polygroup, which I don't need. Which I have to do is that I will convert them into separate, separate polygroups. So I'll click on the auto group. Now this is the problem you, you're going to face. You face a lot of time. You do with the IMM press and it creates multiple polygroups, right? What does it mean? It means that the points close to each other are not welded. That's why it's not a one object. So what I have to do is that I have to weld them. So it's a nightmare if I try to weld them one by one. But uh, in gibberish, what we can do is that we can go to uh, modify topology and then weld points, this option, and just crank it out and weld points and click once again, auto groups, done, boom. So you have each and every individual uh, polygroups with individual stripes. So what you can do is that you can again export it and it's there, right? Now the thing is that you can ask that we have already separated into polygroups, why it's showing one mesh? Because I'm going to show it in a second, why we did it. Uh, so generally, uh, what I used to do is that once I'm happy with this stage, I used to go ahead and do the UV and unwrap that and used to place it on the texture sheet as I want, right? But it's a whole tedious job. It's a huge task because there are like thousands, there must be thousands uh, haircuts and it's not easy to unwrap each and everything. So I had to come up with a uh, another solution to add an extra point into my pipeline to make it a little bit more, uh, you know, um, uh, let's say, uh, dynamic way to do this thing, to, to uh, optimize my time, the development time. So what I did is like, after importing into GBrush, uh, into Maya, I converted all this poly, uh, poly into curves how I did it and why I did it, I'm going to explain it within a second. How I did it, I'm going to show you right now. So this is your uh, hair card. Uh, let me send it to another layer maybe and just lock it. 
So it's no more. Really? Okay. So this is my hair right now. What I'm doing to, going to do is that I will just rename it maybe because when you are handling uh, hundreds of poly, uh, hair cards, it's difficult to maintain all of them. So it's, ve it's very uh, good way to be organized. So let's rename it hair card. Perfect. Done. I'm selecting it and I'm right click and doing it separate. So what it does, it creates a one folder and there are three separate objects. Now I have to convert them into curves. How? I'm going to modify, convert first nerves to uh, polygon to serve div. So this is a serve div. And then you can select three of them. You can modify, convert to serve div to nerves. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay, so this is sub to nubs. Let's click on that. You can see all three. Okay, I select all of them. And maybe shift P to ungroup it. You can delete this whole folder. I don't need any more and I have three nerves. So this is not a polygon. Let's apply one Lambert. It's easy to be. Okay, so this is not a polygon. This is, you can see it's a completely nerves, right? So what I can do is that from here, now here comes action. So, Click on, uh, how many of you have already used action? Okay, cool, cool. So in action, and uh, I'll not go in too deep because it's a, it would be a long presentation. I'll try to short it out because we are running out of time. So what I'm doing is that I'm just converting this three into curves. So I'm going to utility, surface to curves. Uh, you can select it, like maybe right now I'm just using two and opposite click create you can see all of them are curves right now now why i convert it into curves because i wanted to uh, uh, i wanted to uh, create some kind of uh, hair card which i can control maybe i can control its subdivision level maybe i can control its uh, width maybe i can control how the tapper should be how the orientation should be okay so for that reason i'm going to show it how uh, how i did it so i selected it uh, and this is the stage right now okay next stage boom so it's like curves to ribbon mesh so ribbon mesh mesh uh, is a way that i can control my hair cards in any stage of uh, of the whole production from that modeling to implementation into the engine. Any stage, you go back, crank the value, boom, you are done. So let's, let's do that. So I'm just selecting these three of them. First of all, I have to check, because it's a curves, so I have to check that where the start and the, uh, uh, the first CV is. So I can see the first CV is at the end, which I don't need, I need on the other side, right? So what I have to do is that it's a very simple thing, curves and reverse orientation. So what we'll do is that modify, now you check once again, and this is like, select this, curves, reverse direction, select, mod, select and first CV. So it's on the other side, right? It starts from the scalp. Now, have you heard about bonus tools? Any one of you have heard of the bonus tools? So bonus tools is a, is a free plugin, which you can download it from uh, Autodex App Store, I guess. I'm not too sure it's Autodex App, uh, App Store, I guess. So once you download it, it's come over here, like bonus tool here, okay? You click on that, modeling cur curves to ribbon mesh. I click it, boom. 
is there. Now, what I have to do is that only I have to uh, change the width, maybe the width is too big. So maybe 0 0.5, uh, maybe 0 0.5 and yeah. I can switch it off, select and 0 0.5. Got it? Now let's switch on my head mesh. So this is my head mesh. Now maybe the normal is on a different size side right now. I have to tweak it. So what I have to do is that I have to select that one and over here orientation is there. So if you click on that, you can change it. Okay, just a uh, uh, 10 minutes or 20 minutes work. Okay, what are the possibilities that we can do over here? We can increase the number of subdivisions. So let's say I'm selecting all of them and length subdivision I need like let's say 20 because it's not that smooth. 20 done I need the width subdivision more than three maybe uh, five boom done in this case I'll be using only three and then I can use the curvature as well so what is curvature here guards is all about a 2d plane so it has X and Y you don't have Z depth right so when the light reflects on top of that, uh, it, if the camera is in front of that uh, normal, then you can see that uh, plane. But if the camera is like on the other side, maybe on the left or right side, you cannot see that. You can see only a shiny line, which is not a good idea to put it into your uh, uh, model. So what you can do is that I can make this plane into a little bit curvature. I can add a little bit curvature to that. So I select that one and I go over there and I add a little bit curvature. So it's too much, I guess. It's fine, one. So can you see? Now I think that, okay, this is too harsh. The corners are too harsh. I have to increase the uh, subdivisions. Now I can go to the width subdivision and maybe I can increase the five. Boom, it's smooth. Way smoother, right? Uh, so if you think the curvature is too high, you can go 0 0.5 and it's there. Got it? Okay. So I did that way and this is my end product of the end result, how I did it. Now there is one more thing. When you're creating uh, hair cards, is that building the structure in different layers. Layers means this, okay? So maybe I have the one part which is base mesh where I can put all the fill up textures, okay? You may ask that, okay, why did you use that mesh? You could have painted on the, on the sculpt, right? It could be uh, optimized way. But sometimes what happens is that in the games, we have a different kind of skins, different kind of hairstyles, maybe a mohawk maybe a long hair, maybe a short hair. So in that, that case, if I start uh, painting on the skin, I, this is my personal opinion is that uh, if I start painting on the skin, then maybe I have to uh, update the skin textures as well and the normal maps as well. So it can be much more heavier for the whole project. So what I can do is that I can, I can put a one mesh on top of that as a base, base and then I can go for the secondary pass, which is the primary shape, uh, which could be, could be that one, the second one. And the third one is the secondary shape, which has much more, less denser texture, uh, one after another one. And the last one is the flyways, which makes the hair much more cooler, right? There is also a plus point for this process is that creating LODs. So if you're creating LODs, uh, uh, if you have uh, ideas about the LODs, how it works is like, uh, when you're loading your character, if it is a far from your camera, then I don't need that kind of details. So I can just cut down some of the polygons and just we can make a LOD one and zero and two or something like that, blah, blah, blah. So here we can do is that like, if the character is too far, I can off, programmatically off the third secondary shape and the flyways and still the character looks same, okay? 
So in that way, we can optimize, uh, we can load the characters optimized way. Okay, so this, uh, this is the way uh, I converted all the, uh, I created all the uh, hair maps. I, I placed it everything uh, dynamically right now. And let's, let's uh, jump into texturing. Okay, this is cool subject. Texturing, uh, now modeling is done. Now how to create texture? Okay, any one of you have uh, seen this tutorial? I made uh, one and two years back, maybe. So this is the tutorial I made like two years back where I've showed that how to create textures with uh, fiber mesh. You create with the fiber mesh and then you render those things and you create the textures. But th after two years, when I uh, look back, I find this process is not good process. It's a, it's a non-procedural process because if I need to uh, tweak the texture, I have to go back, way back to the first step, change the fiber mesh, do the positioning once again and do the rendering once again. And then I have to do the, uh, all the things again and again, right? So which is not a good time friendly uh, uh, pipeline. So maybe it could be a costly for the production. So let's find out some procedural way how to do it. And in that regard, this is the, this is the tool that I found online, uh, which is name is here and far tool, which is for substance designer. Have you heard about this? Uh, how many of you have worked on? Uh, okay. So how many of you are working with substance designer on a daily basis? Any one of you? Yeah. Okay, fine. So, uh, Substance designer, uh, for who uh, you haven't worked with substance designer, uh, let me tell you a little bit brief about substance designer. It's a, it's a procedural texturing, texture uh, creation, uh, creating uh, uh, software from substance. Right now it's acquired by Adobe. Uh, generally, uh, substance designer are being used to create procedural environmental texture. And with a small tweak of your nodes, you can come up with as different kind of variations of your texture, right? And it's very quick, it's very, uh, it's like uh, production friendly. So my texture was done with Substance Designer and uh, this here and far, it was developed by a company called, uh, I guess, Yosh Yoshido, 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 I hope I'm pronouncing right. It's a French company and the developer is Olivier Liu. Uh, if you want to check this, uh, Check this one, you can go to uh, a station on the marketplace, you can search with here and far, you will find this uh, tool. No, the company didn't pay me for, for, for launching this one. So, uh, so the tool is there, they have uh, provided five in-depth uh, tutorials, all of them like 50 to 40 minutes of the duration, each tutorial. Uh, so it's really, really helpful. Uh, I would uh, recommend you to go through that one and try it for your project. So let me show you the designer. Okay. Okay. Fine. So how the, by the time the substance designer loads, let me tell you how it works. This is the main concept how this tool actually works, okay? Uh, in the first step, you can see it's a dot. In the second step, you can see the dots have been aligned in a single line, right? In the third stage, uh, that gaps are being filled up. In the fourth stage, I have some controllers. Through that controllers, you can dynamically give a shape to your one single uh, here strand. And then afterward, what you can do is that, uh, uh, actually, it works like a parent-child relation in that way. So the 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 strand what, what I uh, created on fourth, this is a parent, and then based on that, on the fifth step, I can create multiple of uh, child uh, strands, and those those are generated randomly. It's like you change the slide, you, you, they are just created. Boom, it's done. And also you have the, uh, the tool has the capability to create a different kind of uh, variations of the same, uh, same texture. So here you can see the six, seven, eight. It, these are the variation of five, number five, uh, with a single uh, tweaking of the value. 
maybe you, if you have a curly here, maybe you have a straight here, maybe you have a short here, anything you can do it. And it's very uh, efficient and uh, uh, you can change any time during your uh, production process. So let's jump into Substance Designer. Okay. Uh, so I'll just open this one. I'll just give a very little uh, brief about it. So as, as soon as you open Substance Designer, you uh, come up with this 3D view, 2D view, and this uh, Explorer on the left hand side. Uh, in the center, your graph view, and on the, the other side is the properties, okay? So these are the maps. You can see, uh, I just will uh, close the 3D view right now, for now. So these are the maps. So this is, in the center, is the hair generator. On the right hand side, those are the nodes through which you can create the mask map, the alpha map, uh, the ID map, depth map, flow map, uh, gradient ramp, utility, uh, utility the, the node that we are going to work with. And also you can create ambient occlusion and uh, normal map. So I'll just show you within a second how to create it. It's a very simple thing. I'll not go in too deep. Uh, to, uh, so what you can do is that, so this is my hair generator. Now this is one. You can see there are a lot of dots, right? A lot of dots. So this means these are the controller that we showed on the fourth slide. I think here, this is the fourth. So these are the controller. You can change the color of those controllers anytime and you can move it, move it like it and give any shape of your, to your uh, hair strand, okay? Now there are a lot of other uh, variables are there. There are a lot of other parameters where you can uh, decide what would be your texture size. Is, is, is it going to be a 2K by 1K or 2K by 2K or 1K by 1K, 4K by 4K, whatever you want to do, you can do it by clicking on, uh, over here, output size here. And uh, uh, also you can, you can, uh, decide what would be the resolution because it's a huge uh, computation file, uh, computing file. So maybe it may lag your computer. So what you can do is that in Substance Designer, a uh, Substance Painter, what we do is that during the texturing process, if my computer lags, then what I do is that I go to the 1K file and then, uh, you know, change it to uh, 5, 5, 12 by 5, 12 and complete my task. And for the final uh, output, my document size is 2K. So it will obviously export 2K file size. The same thing you can do it over here, okay? Uh, I will just show you uh, the other part, which is the child strands, okay? I'll not cover it up right now, because there are a lot of things to talk. Uh, so, child strand. So this is my parent one, and this is child. Now let's see how it looks. So what I can do is that I can click on the uh, depth map, and click on once, back to my hair generator, and I can go to this child strand parameters and I can increase. Boom, it's there, right? So you can increase that and then you can comb it. In GBrush, what we do is that after fiber mesh, there is a, off, there is a, uh, there is a brush is called combing, combing, right? Comb. Uh, yeah, what do you call that? Groom. Grooming brush. brush. Yes, exactly. Groom. Thank you. So the groom brush. So uh, with groom brush, you can you can do whatever you want. The same thing you can do it. So over here you have a, a global grooming grooming uh, parameter and an individual grooming parameter. So what individual grooming parameter does is that uh, each and every strands you can you can uh, modify. No, not each and every. Uh, each and every section of that hair strand. Also, you can comb it uh, globally. Like let's say over here is like auto comb, the power, you change it, it's there. It's a global attenuation. So, so like within a few seconds, you are making so many variations, right? So many variations. So this way, what you can do is that you can create, this is a depth map. Then you can go to the ID map, uh, ID map, those of you who don't know about ID map, ID map is like giving a certain color uh, color ID to each and every single hair strands, 
and you can tweak that value inside your engine. Maybe if you're using Unreal, you can go to the Unreal and you can tweak the value uh, according to that uh, ID and uh, uh, you can change the colors or maybe some other parameters, you can do it. So you have that freedom to do that. So you can create a color ID map and you can do also a, a, a black and white ID map. Uh, then you can use the alpha map. So alpha map is, as you know, that uh, uh, like in foliage, if you're working for uh, environment, if you're working for foliage, uh, you use the alpha, right? So uh, basically the black one will not be visible, the white one will be visible. So on here card, it's a plane, I'm, use, I'm projecting the alpha map, so the white areas will be visible. So that's my here. So that's a, a alpha card. And there's also mask, uh, you can use it, it's an optimized version and uh, yeah. So the thing is that right now, there's another version, it's called flow map. What is flow map? Uh, if you see uh, the hair, I don't have hair that much. So in, in even also in uh, Marmoset, set, if you try with, the, uh, with that, you can see that the reflection you can control either horizontally, uh, horizontally or either vertically, okay? So you can control those uh, reflections. So, so gradient, ramp, uh, uh, sorry, a uh, flow map that works with that. What is gradient ramp? So gradient ramp, let's give an example. Suppose that you using, uh, uh, Unreal, and you want to uh, make different variations of hair with the same uh, mesh, with the same texture, but you need more variations of uh, colorful uh, hair. What you can do that instead of using the color map or uh, diffuse map, you can uh, use plugin the uh, this um, uh, uh, gradient ramp, and you can decide what is the tip color should be, what is the root color should be. Okay, and you can change the color of tip and the root as well and change a lot of other things as well. So it's a very useful map. And the last one that you can use it with the utility. So this is the uh, node that you have to select and you have to work with. And now uh, I'm just uh, wrapping, it, wrapping it really quick because we are running up to, out of time. Uh, now we don't have ambient occlusion and we don't have uh, a normal map occlusion. So what we can do is that from the Z depth, what we have over here, the depth map, I hope you can see, all of you can read that, right? Okay, fine. So from the uh, depth map, I will uh, try to create one, maybe uh, normal, okay. Uh, so normal color is there. I will also do a one output. Okay. So here I want to tell you is that if you're working inside Substance Designer, you have a couple of uh, more to work with. So if you see over here, I hope you can see it. Okay. So this is a link creation mode. If you click on standard, it will be expanded to more uh, segments. Okay, you can see all those things. But if you have like hundreds of nodes are going over there, it's a mess. So it's better to work on compact mode if you know what you are doing. So over here, I want to take the Z depth, Z depth over here, and want to link it with, uh, sorry, I took a wrong node. I so I think, uh, Okay, so the next thing is that you can create another map, which is called uh, AO map from here. The same thing from Z depth. Okay, so you select on ambient occlusion, click on here, and then click on one output. Okay, the same thing from here. So this is your ambient occlusion. And the thing is that you can also, what you can do is that you can also uh, control the darkness of this node. How we can do that? Uh, you can click on that and height depth. It will be more softer. I hope you can see. So, okay, fine. So, yeah, this is the way how you can, how you can create uh, the hair cards in a, in a uh, non-restrictive way. And then the next step, which I'm going to talk about 
is how to arrange all your textures into one uh, single map through a global tiler. So global tiler. So uh, I'll just cut it short right now. What I did is exactly, uh, if you see here, I have duplicated all my uh, nodes into uh, seven by two. You can decide what would be your, uh, how many columns should be, how many uh, rows should be, rows uh, should be there. And then you can uh, decide into global tiler and you arrange them accordingly. And uh, you can make a combined packed uh, texture map out of that. Uh, let's say in RGB mode, so in uh, RGB, the color mode and A is like your alpha. So you combine them and export it for your Marmoset or any other, other uh, game engine. So it's more technical, uh, uh, but it's, it's really, really uh, fun to do that. Once you set up your uh, whole thing, you can uh, keep it for your whole production. I mean, like maybe you have like five different uh, other uh, characters. You just tweak it and done. You have just several different kind of uh, hair textures. So I have just randomly uh, uh, picked up the names for Marmoset and Unreal. So like uh, Unreal, if you need, you can go, you can read this uh, uh, really nice uh, article on uh, realistic hair. Uh, okay, photorealistic hair character. So here uh, they have given a really nice details about how the translucency works, how the scatter map works, how the depth map works. And uh, uh, yeah, kind of thing. So you can just go through. And over here, you can see there is a unique ID map. They all be needing the unique ID map, which is we are creating the ID map and then we are just, uh, you know, plug in over there as well. And also there is a root map is called, which we are calling it over there is a gradient ramp. The same thing. Uh, yeah, kind of like this. That's it. And so this is my final uh, uh, output of uh, the character. And uh, so I'm quite happy with this form right now, but there are a lot of things to improve. Uh, I'm not stopping it here. I'm just taking it a little bit further. Just only one more slide. Uh, we are not working for only in-game characters. We are also working for cinematic characters, right? So for cinematic characters, the rendering system is different for here. It's maybe a, for Arnold, for maybe V-Ray or something like that. So for there, over there, we cannot use the hair cards. What you have to do is that if you are using uh, XGen, we need some guides. So we will tell the action, okay, this kind of clumps it should be, or this kind of modifiers you can add, like, like cut, um, uh, noise, uh, clumps, a lot of things you can do. Now, creating those, uh, those guides will be a nightmare, right? And it may be no, not uh, be matching with my previous game character. So what I can do is that, uh, you remember this shot, right? So we converted the existing curves, right? So we can use these curves and convert them into the guides. So I'll just select the curves. I'll just hide it over here. I'll just really uh, pretty quick, I'm just going to show it. Uh, surface to curves, what I can do is that curves to guides. I select it, done. So this is my curves for my X gen and that's it. And then afterward you can use it and create your X gen realistic here for post-production. Okay, so thank you. Uh, thank you so much guys. So this was my uh, whole presentation about